Are you the Hugh Hefner of LSD? Now that is the dumbest question. Dumbest I might have, who's got the award? Who's got the award? I mean, <laughs> I want to congratulate you. I have been uh, interviewed thousands of times, and I've met the greatest professional. <laughs> crazed interviewers, oh, yeah. and you're right up there with. Oh, he's the best. <laughs> he's, like, he's, the best. he's the Joe Joe Montana, right? right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm Nardwar the human serviette, Timothy Leary. You are. You sure? I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> <laughs> Is going through life without a psychedelic experience like going out life, going throughout life without a sexual experience? <laughs> Well, I'd hate to have either <laughs> way of life. People ask me how many times have I taken LSD. Now, I've been like, experimenting with the brain for like 40 years, you know. And I say, it's like how many times have I made love? I don't count like Will right. Chamberlain, the basketball player. But there's one thing I know, not enough. <laughs> not enough. When was the last time you were busted? Oh, about uh, seven or eight years ago. Did you have any trouble at the border here coming into Canada? Uh, I had an enormous amount of bureaucratic red tape. Uh, enormous, cost me several thousand dollars to get lawyers and so forth. <laughs> did you really meet Charles Manson in prison, Timothy Leary? And did he really supply you with some hallucinogenics, i.e. marijuana? No, uh, I, I was in the same cell. Uh, next to Manson for one night. Legends have developed about that. Um, he did not give me any drugs. I would never take any drug from anyone who does not have the qualities in their eye that I want from that drug. So I'd never take drugs uh, from Manson. This is, this is Tim's tips to the young, okay? <laughs> don't, 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 don't get drugs from Manson. How about, how about Elvis? What about Elvis? Did you ever meet Elvis Gilligan or Frank Sinatra? I've met Frank Sinatra, uh, who is a very suave and uh, courteous uh, mafioso. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Gates? Yes, I know uh, Bill quite well. Yeah. How about Brian Wilson? Would he be the same today if he didn't do LSD in the 60s? Be, this, be different for him, huh? <laughs> Do you think it made a difference on his life, on Brian Wilson's life? Well, it ended it. <laughs> How come? I know, are, you, are we talking about the same thing? This, you're kind of getting off here. Why, why is Brian Wilson the way he is today, and why are you are the way you well, are today? I thought you meant the one from the uh, Rolling Stone, from the... Um, no, not Brian Jones. No, Brian Jones. No, Brian Wilson as in, you know, fun, 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 fun. <laughs> well, uh, I'm a kindly man. I, I try to say nothing negative about anyone, but uh, I've always considered Brian Wilson to be a, uh, a pathetic moron. <laughs> I mean, he, he, it's not his fault. The DNA, you know, they have to have morons out there. You know, <laughs> I, I don't think that he's a charmless or anything evil, but he's just plain, uh, his elevator doesn't reach top floors there. So. Speaking about childs, um, are you related to Winona Ryder or Uma Thurman at all? Last night, I had the pleasure of being uh, Winona Ryder's home in Beverly Hills, where we watched on her big screen, her winning the award for the uh, Best Supporting Actress in uh, Days of Innocence. Her brother, young brother, was with her, and I was sitting next to uh, David Furman, the rock and roller from... Uh, uh, from What's it from? You know, that's Dave Perner, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yes, I, uh, I'm very, very close to Winona. I think she's a brilliant, brilliant person. Uh, Winona Thurman's mother was my uh, wife. We first met. We were on a, I was on my honeymoon with Uma Thurman's mother when I met you in Calcutta. Remember the tall blonde woman? Yes. Yeah. That's Uma Thurman. She's the mother of a famous actress now. No, I remember her. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. Did JFK Timothy Leary ever do acid? I don't know. They say he did. <laughs> but you dropped with Marilyn Monroe, didn't you? Uh, no comment. I don't... Uh, after all, we have to keep certain. You don't, you don't drop and tell. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever made money off your work? I have ended up every month of my life in the hole. I have lived basically, you can't believe, 
uh, the debts I have. Uh, I basically live on the largest and uh, uh, compassion to my friends. I work my ass off. Uh, but I knew that. It's the job of a philosopher. Uh, particularly a Socratic philosopher who teaches young people, corrupts their minds by telling them to think for themselves. It's, it's a hard job. Someone has to do it. Badly paid. Can be dangerous to your health. Is there a patent for acid? Is somebody actually making money off it? I don't know much about details. Uh, I don't think they're making much money, but uh, I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not into chemistry and finance. Well, how does it make you feel that more people, more young people are doing acid today than ever before? Well, I don't think around uh, at night, you know, uh, tossing and turning around the pillow. <laughs> anyway, there are a million more things happening. Um, and again, what does that mean, acid? Uh, because the government's policy of restriction and uh, the government does not regulate or uh, help you know what acid is. You don't. Nobody knows what acid is. My advice is that not, do not go out and get acid from someone that walks up to you in a trench coat in a bar and says, hey, here's some acid. Uh, like anything else that's precious in life, uh, you should know what you're doing. And if you're going to share this experience, do it with someone who shares your spiritual ambitions. And when you look in their eye, they have that same holiness that you're looking for. But, uh, do you still have a mind-blowing experience once a week? I'm having one right now. <laughs> I want to tell you. I think hey, the room is but you've met right Nardwar now. now. <laughs> Being locked up in a cell with him. In the, <laughs> is, uh, Are you on any drugs right now, Timothy Leary? Coke. Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. No, I, you know, coffee. Coffee. Is Prozac the legal LSD of the 90s? <laughs> Where do you get these guys? Do you have committees of, <laughs> committees of monkeys that type them out and things like that? Uh, I'm not an expert on uh, legal drugs. Basically, I don't like legal drugs. Just think of it. If the government legalizes a drug, there's got to be something wrong with it. <laughs> think about it. Like alcohol, things like that. Yeah. Didn't you design some rides for Disneyland? But for, uh, go back to Prozac here. Um, uh, I'm fascinated that they are learning more about the brain because the brain is a series of 100 billion computers and we're learning how to punch up and boot up and format. And yes, I think it's wonderful, if true, that a person who is uh, terribly depressed, not to go to a doctor, I don't think you should have to go to a doctor, you should be able to go to a, a committee of a ministers or your, or your friends and so forth, and, uh, and uh, with the help of your friends, yes, I think it's wonderful that there are these chemicals that obviously are designed by DNA to make the brain react this way. So basically, although I'm not giving product endorsements uh, about Prozac, uh, I, I think in general the idea is good. But of course the doctors are now running around and making billions off it, naturally, and the pharmaceutical thing, I think that... Uh, any psychoactive, psychedelic, psychological drug should not be sold. It's almost so, it's like selling uh, pardons, you know, the, the priests used to do that, selling uh, the sacraments. Um, I think that they should be uh, regulated uh, by a society. Uh, certainly young people shouldn't take them. But the very idea of, uh, of selling uh, psychoactive drugs, it, it's worse than prostitution, in, in a sense. Uh, and uh, I, I haven't thought this quite through. So uh, Sounds good so far. Be gentle with me. <laughs> Listen, let's take a break here for a minute. And, uh, I'll ask you some questions, huh? Okay, sure. Well, How long can you uh, stay uh, quiet? <laughs> <laughs> How long do you want me to stay quiet? Didn't you design some rides for Disneyland, though? Weren't you once called upon to consult for that at all, Timothy Leary? No. It would never happen. What about Richard Alpert? Like, you're here in Vancouver performing tonight. What are your memories of Vancouver? Wasn't there, like, the Johnny Appleseeds of LSD that lived in Vancouver? You jump from Richard Alpert to Vancouver to Johnny Appleseed. What's the... What's the point here? Well, Richard Alpert recorded this record here. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he recorded this in Vancouver. 
Good for him. This Rabba Bandas, and it goes right here. It goes, uh, describing his early days with Timothy Leary and his introduction to psychedelics, Baba Ram Das, and tells us growing it. That's like recorded in 1969 in Vancouver. Good for him. I didn't realize that. And what do you remember going on in Vancouver around that time? Listen, uh, I'm so senile. I don't remember what was going on last night at this time. So, uh, What is your name? Anardwar. What does that mean in English? It's like sting in English. Buzz. <laughs> um, Timothy Leary, is G. Gordon Liddy the anti-Timothy Leary? No. Uh, he has a million uh, uh, characteristic personality. I have a million, and... Uh, uh, Maybe 50,000 of them were different, but what's this bullshit about anti, anti-Christ, anti-God, devil? And there's no such thing as anti-Timothy Leary. You're betraying a feudal, if not worse, uh, theology here. The anti-Timothy Leary. <laughs> I'll, I'll get him and I'll put him on a fucking cross and I'll put a sword through his side and I will make him a th crown of thorns, baby. Yeah, he's anti. <laughs> but actually, I'm reading from a quote from Newsweek magazine, 1968, Dr. Timothy Leary. The work of the psychedelic... 1968. 1968. Well, for Christ's sake, I did... The person that's here now, I have almost no relation to that person. Right, this is tying in all to that. The work of the psychedelic scholar-politician is over. With love and confidence, we turn our we work and our planet over to the young and their prophets. Alongside Psychic TV, who would this circle of 90s prophets comprise of? Who's Psychic TV? Genesis P. Orange. Did you some, do some work with him? Orange? Your Orange? Video, your video, Psychic TV. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, There's like a band called Psychic TV. I know. Why'd you drag him in? Is he not a 90s prophet of Timothy Leary? Oh, well, now we're getting into prophets. <laughs> I've got an anti-Christ uh, in Lydia, and i got a prophet in uh, Genesis. Did you ever... Genesis is a very uh, talented uh, northern English guy who uh, uh, had a great moment in England when he started uh, Throbbing Gristle. He uh, used his children a lot in, uh, in naked uh, stuff. Do you know that? No, yeah. So he's, he's no, he's not the Timothy Leary of the nineties. He's a nice guy, but uh, who is? You are. Pam. I, <laughs> Pam, the promoter's night of AMS program. What oh, the concept of is and yeah. the, the the antichrist and the anti this and who's that and all that? These are, this is very primitive uh, thinking. Okay, here's something simple, finally, winding up here, Timothy Leary. Do the guys with LSD get the most chicks? The vulgar sordidness of that question is, beyond, is Olympic. Getting chicks. I mean, what does that mean, getting chicks? I mean, that is a very vulgar... Uh, 50s term. Man, you are out of it. You really are out of it. All right. Thanks so much, Timothy Leary, and doot 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 doot. Me too. <laughs> <laughs>